Welcome back to the LNX Files. As always, this is a safe space for all things spooky. And today we're gonna use these tarot cards to do a why didn't they work check on Joshua Jackson and Katie Holmes. This was a viewer requested video and part of our Dawson's Creek retrospective series. Let's go. So yeah, this was a great viewer suggested video. We already did one on Heath Ledger and Michelle Williams. Now we're doing one on Joshua Jackson and Katie Holmes. Apparently they dated on the low when Dawson's Creek was first happening and they were together for like a year. I mean, this was the 90s, folks. We were so young. We were so innocent. That was such a great show, kind of, you know? Do they still make them like that, those sort of angsty 90s dramas? So if you think they do, in the comments, put put down the name of a show that I should watch that's like the modern version of Dawson's Creek, because I am drawing a blank, right? So when it comes to Katie Holmes and Joshua Jackson, these two are compatible. Like, so I could see why they hit it off as kids and like, well, I guess they were minors. I was like, kids? Were they really kids? And I was like, yeah, they kind of were. I think they were minors. I think they were, weren't they all under the age of 18 when that show got off the ground? So it was shot, like, not in L.A., not in L.A. adjacent. It was, like, shot in a little North Carolina town, right? Or near North Carolina. Where was Dawson's Creek shot? Yeah, it was shot in North Carolina, Wilmington, North Carolina. So it really did give it that sort of, like, authentic, down-home type of vibe. I, of course don't know if they were trying to make it look like that part of the eastern coast or, or were they trying or were they trying to cheat it for new england i don't know these questions aren't really that valid so in terms of their astrological compatibility katie is a sagittarius sun leo rising leo moon wow so she is all fire you know you meet people like that that seem really mellow but are like all fire and what I can tell you about them is that when they blow, they really blow. So for people like her that seem like kind of chill and almost like, and almost like they're, like Katie Holmes I would have guessed is like a cancer. Like she just seems really kind of quiet and mellow, mellow and just happy to be at home. I know people like this and it's just like, they're like a warm crackling campfire when things are cool which is most of the time but like if you have an argument with these people you can see a very different side of them you know, you can see that campfire become an inferno so that's really really interesting it's it's really really interesting and these are leo and sag are signs that really appreciate their autonomy and their sovereignty and so i'm surprised she lasted as long as she did in scientology because keep in mind she was technically a scientologist when she was married to tom cruise she had to convert that was one of the stipulations of the marriage and she had scientology handlers and teachers who were like doing her auditing and blah 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 like there was a lot going on that was like kind of crushing her her sense of autonomy and sovereignty and individualism so she must have at first really loved Tom to be able to tango with all of that stuff but I can see why you know she ended up in New York which is uh, a city of great independence and just like hey be you do your own thing but also very far from Scientology and New York doesn't have the same presence that Scientology does as in LA the silent partner in LA they have a very very strong presence here so interestingly enough Joshua Jackson is a Gemini so Gemini Sag classic pairing their sun signs have a classic classic pairing Gemini Sag is like Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie like that's a classic pairing uh, his moon is in Leo so his moon meshes well with her moon we don't know Joshua Jackson's ascendant but we do know that his Venus is in Cancer Katie's Venus is in Scorpio, so, is that right? So their Venus, their Venus, so, so Venus, their planets of love, romance, relationships, commitment, were both in water signs, so they were able to approach relationships from a deeply emotional place. His Mercury is in Gemini, her Mercury is in Sag. So those planets also have very good synastry. So there was a lot here that was working in a very beneficial way. And like there's so much astrological compatibility here that I would go so far to say if, that if these two met later in life, they could have made it work. Like that would have been like a forever relationship if the timing had been different and they just hadn't been so young and like, you know, on these different life paths you know, subject to change. So let's get going, let's find out why didn't they work. All right, Katie, Joshua, Katie, Joshua. 
helping or hurting the situation and what was the bottom line about why these two didn't work okay katie's external vibe towards joshua okay so five of wands so this is generating more heat than light it's kind of like like innocent drama innocent chaos innocent skirmishes it could be like lack of direction lack of focus like this is a card which signals like she was maybe kind of all over the place she may have really liked Joshua. There may have been other guys that she also really liked when they were dating. Like, she may have wanted to see what else was out there. Like, that's what this card signifies. Basically, a lack of focus maybe on him or on the relationship. And that's just because they were so young, you know? She may not have known that, like, PC was the one. May not have had enough life experience to be able to make that call. Okay. Joshua's external vibe towards Katie. Hmm. Interesting interesting that we got this so three of cups upright that's a little weird <laughs> they were dating right just the two of them so this is making me wonder like if he, either he was just like i value you so much as a friend like if that's what he was coming at her with or if there was like a third party like he loved her and he loved someone else very much or if he was like dating her but not exclusive and also dating someone else like this signifies, you know, the presence of a third party or just that, you know, the key with this card is happiness and abundance in groups, happiness and creativity in groups, love and affection in groups. So there's a sense of like lack of focus on each other, which makes sense. You know, these two cards, because they were so young and they met within the context of this greater community of the set and the show and the producers and the crew and all these people, you know? All right. So Katie's internal vibe towards Joshua. Hmm. Okay, weird, not really a feeling card. So we got the so we got the Six of Pentacles. So the Six of Pentacles is a card of giving and receiving, how things of value need to be in flow. Time, money, love, attention, affection, that there's a time to give, there's a time to receive. So it's a weird card about like, well, how, what were her feelings like towards him? And it was just like charitable. <laughs> it's not very romantic like I, it may have, it may have just been like she felt good like they had a good relationship and they they gave when it was time and they received when it's time and that you know everything was in flow in their relationship it could be it's not a very affectionate card but it's in some ways a very practical card so it may have something to do with the fact that like they knew that the producers or the higher ups probably connected to the show knew that they were dating and liked it and thought that it was good for the show it may have been like there may be a vibe of like this is good for like the collective and good for the greater success of the show us running around together I don't know it's it's kind of a weird card for this context but it's good that it's upright Joshua's internal vibe towards Katie hmm. okay so interesting first reversal we've gotten so so we got the ace of swords in reverse so upright this is mind over matter so your mind is triumphing over any challenging or murky or difficult circumstances so when this card comes up in reverse this is a card of like either you are getting disturbing information about someone that like kind of knocks you sideways and you're like oh wait but I didn't know that or there's just something like you can't get past you know like oh you hooked up with my friend a year ago I didn't know that and you're like well we weren't dating back then so what do you care it's like they can't get past it or like oh you cheated on your last boyfriend like you're a cheater no I don't do that anymore you're a cheater like there's something that I was gonna say pacey there's something that Joshua had trouble getting his head around Maybe it was just like dating a coworker, like was too difficult or dating, knowing that their relationship was on display in front of all these people. There's, there's something for him that he couldn't get his mind around, which is a big deal because he's a Gemini and Geminis operate with their brains. And you could say, oh, but Lennox isn't everyone. No, some people use their heart as the operating system and, and as the navigator throughout the world. Like Gemini's very much less so. Like they are very brain anal analysis critical thinking oriented and if there was something he couldn't get past that was not good for the relationship and that would have absolutely prevented it from moving forward okay what was helping or hurting the situation oh okay interesting so we got the wheel of fortune so basically fate destiny karma things being predetermined them meeting being predetermined and them parting ways being predetermined so basically like i imagine they had some sort of karmic agreement to meet when they were young make that connection resolve things from some sort of past life and then move on and that that was accomplished so basically what these cards are suggesting is that like everything unfolded as it was supposed to and it was all within the karmic order 
Okay. All right. And what was the bottom line about why these two didn't work? Hmm. Okay. I mean, it was ultimately nine of swords in reverse. It was ultimately causing them too much mental strife. Maybe Joshua more than her. So nine of swords upright or in reverse, just not a great card. You know, it's a card of anxiety of, you know, concern of repetitive thoughts, insomnia, nightmares, difficulty sleeping, feeling very alone. So when the card comes up in reverse, sure, all these things could be receding or the whole situation could be destabilized. But ultimately, whatever it was about the two of them dating while they were newly famous or while the show was taking off, it wasn't helping the situation. And they were just ultimately better off as friends than having a relationship on display, you know, back in the 90s. It may have just been like it was too intense. Do you know what I mean? Like they had to be, you know, PC and... What was her name? Charlie? Andy? I forget. Like, they had to be like, you know, there was a time when they were together on the show. It's just, they probably needed space from each other. Like, it was such an intensive experience where, like, you're having 16-hour days on set. Sometimes people just want to go home to, like, their family and friends or to themselves and not have to deal with, like, their co-workers 24-7. Like, it may have just been too much Dawson's Creek all the time. And at these really young, formative ages, they m might have needed time and space away from each other to develop and to just be the people that, you know, they turned into. So that's what I'm getting from this. That's really interesting. So that's what I've got for you guys. Comment below. What did you think about Joshua and Katie? Did you know that they had dated? Because I was not always aware of this. I was only... Because I was not always aware of this. This was kind of like news to me. Um, but you know what? I'm always often the last to find things out. So here we are. Like and subscribe. And as always, we'll do this again.